Finnish artist and art instructor and this time I want to talk about the issue when people say that they feel disconnected with their art. Uh, many say that they have taken a lot of classes and they have created a lot of art and they still feel the disconnection with their result and some say that they feel the disconnection and they don't even know if they've produced good work or not. About six years ago, I wanted desperately find my style. So I took a pattern design uh, online course and one of the first assignments there was to go out uh, and take some inspirational uh, photos and then create a, a motif based on those photos. When I took my camera and went out, I kind of felt dis the disconnection already. I took the photos, but uh, it didn't really feel good. And when I came back, I, I did the job, I designed the pattern and um, uh, it didn't, it, it really didn't resonate with me. And then, of course, I shared it with the class and I waited for the comments and I got some, but whatever people said, it didn't really, it didn't really resonate with me because I wasn't, it, it, it felt that, uh, that the work was produced by somebody else than me. I wondered if the design is so brilliant that I just don't get it, that it would need a specialist to know this, that. And then on the other hand, and the next, in the next moment, I thought that maybe the design wasn't that good at all. But because I felt so passionate about art, I kept on creating and I practiced and practiced because, you know, people say if you will practice, you will find it. And sometimes I did produce something that I was quite happy with. And again, sometimes I felt really, really that, that I'm actually nothing at all. And my progress was really s slow and I wasn't satisfied with it. But then a few years ago, I started to realize that uh, my imagination and my satisfaction are connected together. That if I can expand my imagination, then I also can connect with things that really bring satisfaction to me. I started developing ways to imagine and ways to use images and imagination to lead myself, to kind of build an art director that leads myself as an artist. And that way I discovered uh, things and values and ideas that are very different than how other people had defined me so far. I had to get rid of all the definitions that I had built around me and what other people had said about me. For example, I'm not someone who uses a lot of jewelry or who uh, decorates uh, everything with glitter or something like that. But then when I used my imagination, there was a big sense of luxury that really, really resonated with me. And then I realized that if my art doesn't contain a bit of luxury, then I'm not satisfied with it. Another thing that I found through my imagination was drama and how I love it. I love strong contrast I, and I love to see something changing, big events, something dramatic to happen. And again, this was 
not typical uh, thing to notice because I live in a country where modesty is highly valued. We Finnish uh, like modest people and we try to tone everything down and I now realized why I often got comments how I feel that I'm too passionate or too enthusiastic or that I should just calm down. And now I re also realized why it was so difficult to learn that and how it also blocked my creativity when I tried to be like that. I also realized that I love to take new challenges and that was why I often wanted to play with different styles and, and I found that problematic that I wanted to play with all kinds of different things and then I should really focus and build myself as an artist. But when I realized these big things that are uh, behind uh, my satisfaction and behind uh, my true imagination, I also realized that I can play really freely because no matter what kind of style I use to express myself, there will always be these things, this kind of luxury, movement, change, drama, all these things that are behind all that. And I can also play mind games when I create art. I can use my imagination to build part of that and then uh, make decisions how far I want to go when I create the image. If I go back to that, that moment six, about six years ago, I do realize why there are classes and why uh, I also have classes where you gather in inspiration and then create something out of it. If you've taken a lot of those classes, you've kind of circulated around your root problem. Your root problem isn't to make you take photos and record everything that you see and, and create sketchbooks and all that. That's actually a natural thing to do once you get connected with your imagination and what you want to create. It will be natural. For example, if I go, if nowadays, if I go for a walk with my dogs, I see nature's luxury everywhere. I see wind blowing there and I see inspiration all over the place. And I always carry a camera, my phone, and, and I take a lot of images. And I think that how world is full of inspiration and how didn't I see that back then? During the recent years, it has been really interesting to notice and observe how people talk about the world of art. And often they divide the world of art and art making into two categories. There are hobbyists who focus on technique courses and then there are professionals who should take business courses. But actually, if you are a professional and you are not in touch with your true passion, then actually all that marketing and sales stuff that business coaches teach you will feel as phony, as superficial and as disconnecting as when you were a beginner and you didn't see the continuous path from your thoughts to your art. There's a field between these two categories and that's artistic identity and building that if you are a hobbyist or a professional you should do that anyway. That's why I built my coaching program, The Exploring Artist, and I wanted to use the word exploring because I think that at its best art is about experimenting, art is about playing, and art is about becoming more conscious of the passion that makes us create art. Self-discipline for creating art 
is not as good thing than to have this kind of deep passion and uh, the desire to make an impact with your art that thrives you and that makes you create art regularly and think about it regularly and that's why I created my coaching program uh, that also includes creative challenges and why I included creative challenges which are about the actual creating is that I don't think we can only think and think and think and get insights by thinking. I think that we as artists also need to do the work in practice. Take the brushes, take the needles, take the tools, whatever you use when you're creating art and use your hands to get those insights and, and to deepen those insights. So that's why my coaching program, The Exploring Artist, also includes the practical creating, but not in a step-by-step -step way, but giving practical uh, creative challenges that you can interpret uh, in a way that's, that you want and that uh, will empower you in your art making. We will also analyze your work and uh, focus on what you have been creating uh, recently and use that to also discover things that you might have not noticed so far. And because practice is really important to me, I also wanted to include some practical stuff in this video too. So now in the end of this video, I will take that inspiration photo that I took six years ago and translate it to a different kind of motif, a bit more complicated one that includes some of these elements that um, my true passion is about. Uh, I hope you enjoy that, watching that, and I hope you will join the coaching program.